Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to create a dynamic metallic spike geometry using the Pops family and Touch Designer. We'll begin by using Chop to Pop to generate flowing sign based curves, then apply skin to give them tubular form. Finally, we'll organize the structure using multiple copy operators to build what we'll call a metallic spikes composition. Chapter 1 Overview The following network is divided into three clearly defined sections. From left to right, we have the first parametric modeling section, which I've called tube. In the second section called tube to spike, we find the most important part, where we'll see a super interesting technique on how to manipulate points using chop patterns. The main question I tried to solve in this section is, how can I deform the tips of the tube so that they are pointed on one end and have a radius on the other? And also, how can I do this using chop patterns to make it fully parametric? I managed to solve this using a lookup channel and a math mix and the rest is basically resolved with a copy operator. Finally, in the last section, we have the rendering part, which we won't go into detail about, since you've already learned this in several of my previous POP tutorials. What I can mention is that I'm using an HDRI together with an environment map and a couple of lights. To achieve this metallic result, it's important to use a PBR material. Without further explanation, let's start building the network. A quick pause. If we haven't met yet, I'm Okamirufu and my life's purpose is to create, inspire, and educate through my work as a creative technologist focused on touch designer. I'm jumping in just for a moment to let you know that I've built a growing community on school where you'll find beginner and intermediate courses, exclusive tutorials, and a library of downloadable project files, including special bundles you won't find anywhere else. But more than that, it's an active, thriving space. For example, in one of the exclusive tutorials I uploaded recently, there are already tons of people interacting, sharing project files, asking questions, and helping each other. It goes far beyond a traditional academic setting. I've put a lot of energy into making it practical, efficient, and fun. And the best part? This space is slowly integrating all the value I've already built on Patreon, all in one place for the same price. I truly hope to see you there, sharing knowledge, experimenting together, and asking the questions that help us all grow. I'll leave all the links in the description. Chapter two. Network. Let's start by creating a chop pattern and using the following parameters. Set the length to 200. Leave number of cycles at one point. And animate the phase using the expression absolute time seconds divided by 9.0. In my case, because I want to give it a very subtle movement, then set taper X to 0 and taper decay to negative 0.05. We finish adjusting these parameters with an amplitude of 0.3. Now right click on the output and connect a chop to pop. Don't worry about the error you see inside. It's just that we need to assign the values correctly. For this, the parameters you'll use are set the start and end position between zero and five. And most importantly, select only the Y coordinate in the attribute scope. Next, connect a line metrics period. Because we want to use tangents to later correctly place the circles we'll copy to create the tube, activate the tangent option. Now, above this operator, create a circle. Change its orientation to the YZ plane and set the radius to something small. We can also lower the divisions to save graphical resources, so bring this down to half. Let's say 20 divisions. That's all for the circle. Now create a copy. Connect the line metrics to the second input of the copy. We can already see our tube created. Perfect. Now select the copy pop and in the template section, activate the option template rotate to vector. Choose plus X for the forward direction and in rotate to vector attribute, we'll use the tangents calculated by the line metrics to correctly orient each circle so that they follow the movement of the curve. Now connect a normalize and we only want to normalize the X coordinate values. So use the expression P dot x. Perfect. Finally, let's create a new attribute in the output attribute scope section. You can name it however you want, but for clarity I've called it ramp. Now let's move on to the next section where we'll create the spikes based on another pattern chop. For this, first create a pattern chop. And copy these values, set length to 100. Number of cycles to 
and finally use a more exaggerated amplitude of 4. Now connect a math, and in the range section, we'll simply invert the values. From 0 to 4, we want the output to go from 4 to 0. I just did this briefly to invert the direction of the curve. Next, create one of my favorite operators, the lookup channel. Connect the normalize to the lookup and drag the math operator into the chop parameter. In lookup attributes, select the ramp we created in the normalize and we'll name this new attribute scale. Now all that's left is to connect a math mix to calculate how we'll use the chop pattern curve to deform the tube and turn it into a spike. Connect a math mix at the end of the network. In the combine section, choose the math operation A times B. In scope A, select the Y and Z coordinates, write P.YZ. In scope B, use the scale we just created. Finally, the result scope will default to some values. But if you want, you can copy and paste the same coordinates you used in scope A. Perfect. Just like that, we have a spike created. If you want to understand this in depth and why it works, I recommend visiting my school community, where you'll not only find this project file, but also project reviews with comments and discussions from the entire community. All right, now the next part is the easiest. Basically, we need to create quads, so we'll use a skin pop. After that, connect a normal to recalculate the normals for shading. Now create a copy. And to create the positions for each spike, we'll use a sphere. Before connecting, make sure to reduce the sphere frequency to 2.0. And from there, test the limits of your graphics card. Finally, to complete this part, if you want the spikes to be arranged radially, that is, pointing outward from the center, go to the template section and activate the option template rotate to vector. Leave the first option as is, set direction to plus X. And for rotate to vector attribute, you can use either the normals with the letter N or also P for positions. And that's it. All you need to do now is connect it to a render setup and see the result. You can reposition the camera. Or most importantly, start playing with the parameters of each chop pattern which are the most important ones in this composition. For example, you could change the wave type to random dot. And the result will look completely different. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.